everyone. Today I'll be discussing the nutritional requirements and recommended feeding guidelines for gestating sows. For some general information about pregnancy and commercial swine, gestation typically lasts approximately 114 days. The easy way to remember this is that it lasts 3 months, 3 weeks, and 3 days. Some ways to detect pregnancy in sows includes watching if the sow returns to estrus after artificial insemination or mating, ultrasonography, physical palpation, or by testing hormone concentrations in the blood. All of these methods have various pros and cons, so it depends on the operation to decide which ones to use. One sign that a sow has returned to estrus is that she stands still and locks her limbs when you apply pressure to her back. You can also look for a swollen red vulva. These are ultrasonographic images of a non-pregnant sow versus a pregnant one. In image A, the sow is not pregnant. In image B, the sow is 70 days into her pregnancy and the spinal cord can be seen here. These are some of the objectives that need to be kept in mind when considering the nutrition of pregnant sows. Minimizing embryonic and fetal losses is of the utmost importance so that you can have a larger litter. You have to also make sure that the sow and her offspring have proper nutrition during gestation and throughout lactation to maximize the growth of the piglets. Keeping the sow in balanced nutritional health also increases her reproductive lifetime. When trying to formulate how much to feed the sows, you need to be sure that her body weight is maintained throughout the pregnancy, meaning that she doesn't lose or gain excessive weight. You also need to make sure that all essential nutrients are provided even though a limited feeding program is recommended. When it comes to feeding gilts, she needs to be fed to compensate for her own bodily growth since she's not fully grown and also for the growth of her offspring. The three main components that need to be considered for the sow's energy requirements are her maintenance requirements, the growth of the conceptus, and maternal gains such as uterine growth and preparation for lactation. All of these components can be affected by multiple factors such as the body size of the sow, what condition she's in, what stage of gestation she's at, her health status, and her environmental conditions. For example, a larger sow would have a higher maintenance requirement compared to a smaller one. Or if a sow has some sort of disease, she will have different energy requirements and nutrient requirements than a healthy sow. As a general guideline, sows should be fed based on their body condition. However, this shouldn't be the only criteria when determining the diet of the sow. This is a general guideline for feeding sows based on body condition. If she has a body condition score of 3, then there shouldn't be an increase or a decrease in the amount of food that she's given. If she's over or under her ideal body condition, then the feed should be ingested until she reaches good condition. The main objective of every animal is to maintain homeostasis for survival. So energy obtained from food will be used for maintenance of her own body before anything else. Studies have shown that 75% or more of energy intake by pregnant sows is used to meet their maintenance requirements. The maintenance requirements can be changed based on environmental conditions. If it's hot, her maintenance requirements can go up to 90%. When it comes to fetal growth, there's not much need to change the sow's diet. However, if the survival rate of the piglets is less than 80%, you can increase the fat content of the sow's feed during the last two to three weeks of gestation to improve energy stores in the piglet's bodies. Maternal weight gain accounts for about 15-25% to of the sow's total energy needs. There won't be energy supplied for this until maintenance and fetal growth requirements are met though. For early gestation nutritional requirements, mostly maintenance requirements need to be met since there is not much fetal or maternal growth. If the sows are overfed or are too fat at this stage, there can be a decrease in embryo survival rate. During mid-gestation, the body condition of the sow should still be maintained. If the sows are too fat or too thin, then they should be brought to an ideal body condition. For late gestation, fetal growth increases dramatically. To compensate for this growth, the feed intake of the sows can be increased, but make sure to keep an eye on their body condition to make sure they don't get too fat. Other considerations such as fiber content of the feed can be taken into account. Fiber can act as a laxative agent and improve the comfort of the sows. It can also limit energy, energy intake, which will help control her weight. Feeding in groups can result in competition for feed, so the more dominant sows will eat more than they need, while the more submissive sows won't eat enough. By individually feeding sows, you can help track how much they're eating.